This episode is brought to you by Snaf, the social network for Apple fans. You can check them out at snaf.me via the link in the description. This is Tom with Gadget Spot TV, and today we're taking a look at the Huawei Ascend G300. Now, this is a budget end Android smartphone, and it's going to cost you just £100 pay as you go, or you get the handset for free for just £15.50 for a 24 month plan from Vodafone. So from a hardware point of view, I was actually surprisingly impressed with the G300. It's not the best quality, I mean uh, it doesn't compare to something like the iPhone or the HTC One X, however it doesn't feel like a £100 device. It feels uh, quite sturdy, it definitely not doesn't feel cheap in the hands, and that's a, definitely a main contributing factor to a phone's build. You will see around the phone we get such features as a micro USB port, a lock switch, volume buttons, all of that good stuff, what you'd expect from a phone. They're all in quite good locations, uh, no difficulty with pressing any of them or anything like that. We have a removable back casing so you can access the battery and swap that out for a different kind of battery. This is a 1500 milliamp hour battery, which is actually more than the iPhone 4S, so you're definitely going to get a good day's charge out of it, no problem whatsoever. So moving on to the software, this is running Android 2.3 Gingerbread, and it has a 1 GHz quad-core processor, which actually does a surprisingly good job. It's obviously not as speedy as, uh, again, an iPhone or as fluid as an iPhone, but you get this, uh, you get the feeling that it's managing. It's not lagging constantly. Uh, you get occasional lag when you're going through typing very quickly. You'll lag occasionally, and obviously, if you played a graphic-intensive game, it's going to really struggle. But for general things like web browsing, emailing, and stuff which you're just general usage with the phone, the phone's going to manage no problem and that processor will keep your phone running buttery smooth. Where you really experience the fact that this phone's actually not lagging, which is really, really good for this price point, is when you can just swipe through all of the pages. And only when you do it seriously quick, like I'm doing right here, do you experience a little bit of lag and it's nothing too major. In fact, the only place where I experienced any lag which was notable was on the typing and the keyboard. And for me, that is quite a huge problem because I typed quite a lot on my phone. So for me, that would be an issue. However, you need to sum up whether or not you want the cheaper. The 4-inch display running at 800 by 480 pixels is actually quite good. And I, I don't like the color reproduction too much. The colors feel a little bit washed out. But the actual resolution of it uh, is quite sharp. And the actual size of the physical display is very nice nice and one of my favorite sizes for a display on a mobile phone. Another thing definitely worth mentioning is the camera. Now this is a 5 megapixel rear facing camera and it shoots exceedingly well again for the price. It just really really impressed me. That you can get very detailed close up shots. The software running it is excellent. However where the camera is let down is via the video mode. The exposure it kind of auto adjusts all the time and just doesn't look that great at all. All in all, if you're looking for a fast-paced Android phone, this is definitely not the handset for you. However, perhaps you're buying a, f a smartphone for your child or something to that nature, and you want a first smartphone which is going to be very good and provide a good user experience, but not going to give uh, the extra functionality that, for example, the HTC One X, the Samsung Galaxy S3, or the iPhone has. You just want an Android phone which works and doesn't have that much risk attached if you were to lose it or break it. At just £100, this is a really good choice for something of that quality. It really amazes me how Android devices have come on. A while ago I reviewed the Scroll Extreme and that extremely impressed me for the price tag that it provided and it just makes me wonder whether the extra kind of £400 for the iPhone is worth it compared to this at just £100 and it gives you a decent user experience. Obviously it's not comparable really but it definitely gets the job done for a decent smartphone. So thanks very much for watching. This has been Tom with Gadget Spot TV.